Hey guys, and welcome back to the second episode in our series for Aether Imperium. In the first episode, we kind of looked at the interface and at the basics. So we had a closer look at the construction menu, the troop recruitment menu, and simply also the background and the history of the game. This episode, we're actually going to have a little bit more excitement and also a little bit more action as we will start expanding um, our kingdom, if you want to call it that. And let's get started. Let's uh, recap what we have in troops. We have a spearman, bowman, and a swordsman. And our hero is a scout, so he mostly uses bow and arrow to do the damage. Let's first set up some construction in the, in the capital, in the castle. So this is the swordsman school that we built last time. Um, I want to add something to that. A little bit of entertainment. We discussed last time all these different options that you have for the construction. Let's start with the show booth. Let's get the population mood up by one. Um, just to keep them relaxed and happy. So I'm going to put that in the queue. It costs 70 and it will actually open up several opportunities for entertainment further on in the game. There we go. Now we have two options. We can either focus on the locations within our own province uh, that we can still conquer and uh, get loot and experience from. Uh, you see them listed here. Or we can actually decide to start conquering one of the neighboring provinces, which is what I would prefer to do. And um, as I discussed last time, you can actually see what kind of mobs, what kind of defense you're dealing with. So this is a free settlement, which is usually the easiest to get. These are outlaws. I prefer the, actually this one, because it will open up a lot of vision here as well. So we're going to give our hero the command to go there. Uh, we're doing pretty well so far. I mean, the, the game just started, but uh, we have positive gold income and uh, positive gem generation. Nothing else we need to do right now. We gave the command to construct one building in the, in the capital, and uh, our hero is going to enter this province here. So let's end the turn. The moment we start exploring or enter another province, we usually get these messages. In this case, the hero is stating that uh, this should be an easy victory. I can read tooltip here. Mod has entered the province of Shaudul Wood. Suddenly the party's way is blocked by a gang of brigands operating in this area. Number of enemies is four. The following units were spotted among the enemies. A brigand, thief, and bowman. And what will the order be? We can attack, retreat, negotiate, or scout. In this case, I just want to attack and conquer. And this will actually take us to the battle map, which is a lot more exciting than the, the global map. So this is the battle map. You have several layouts for this. Uh, let me go to the, the basic layout that might make more sense. This is our area where our troops are situated right now, where we start at. And this is where the enemy is. Uh, you see forests, hills, and plains, and also rocks. What we can do is, I usually use this layout. If you press this button, you go to the... It, it gives me a better overview, even though the graphics are really nice in the game. But um, this is hill. It kind of looks for hill. This is uh, forest. Then you have these different tiles and terrains that come all with their benefits and disadvantages in some cases. For example, if you hover over hill, you see it will give your, the person that is standing there will get, get one counterattack, one defense, and one range. So it's a really good spot for, let's put the hero there. So you select the hero, move him right over there. Because that's how the battle starts. You first position your troops, and then you, know, you basically start fighting. Uh, we have a bowman, so let's find some hill for him. This is our tank right now. We're going to move him up front. And this is our spearman. This is a fair, fairly good layout because our two archers have further range because of the, the hill. Also, it's also usually wise to put your tanks on a hill as well because the hill uh, gives plus one defense, plus one range, and plus one counterattack. Now, for 
for him the range doesn't matter much but if he gets hit by let's say one of these melee fighters then he actually has better defense and he actually does more damage with his counter attack now the strategy for the the scout the way i play him is very simple uh, we want to kill everybody off before they get to the hero uh, because the hero is just a, it, he's a hunter so we don't want to do or engage in melee fighting Let's have a look here. So they have a thief, two brigands, and a bowman. Um, I'm going to actually look at their information so we can get acquainted with that because we will en encounter these uh, mobs in the in the rest of the game as well. So let's start with the brigand. So you see they have evil alignment. This is something I will discuss in a moment. Uh, you see his stats. It's nothing very spectacular. He has... He doesn't really have anything ranged, of course. Um, his defense is very... I mean, these are very cheap troops. It's too upkeep, 10 gold to get. Very cheap. Um, they're going to be easy to defeat. But his attack and counter-attack are, are pretty pretty decent. So he has two movement. Uh, that is more than what we have on most units. We usually have one movement. Um, he has skills and his skills and properties... Um, you can see that the unit claims a portion of trophies after the battle, reducing the looting income by 10%. So if we would have one of these in our troops, we would actually have to, well, sacrifice 10% of the looting, uh, the trophies, after we would have won our battle. It's one of the reasons as to you know, why most people usually don't have them around, even though they're cheap. And they're really good cannon fodder. Um... The unit resorts to robbery in his spare time, decreasing the tax income of the province he's located in by 10%. So even if you're not fighting with him and you have him in your army in one of your provinces, you actually get 10% less tax income, less gold. <laughs> Two qualities that are really not positive to have to have around. And there's also a whole description here. I'm going to spare that. That is the brigand, so let's go to the thief, which is also evil. Uh, his numbers are slightly better. Um, upkeep and the cost of recruitment are less. Or, well, sli slightly higher than the Brigand, but they're still way less than what we are having. He doesn't have much hit points, but he does a lot of damage. So you, you kind of want to keep him away from your troops, especially from your hero or your, your bowmen, who, who are usually very vulnerable. And uh, he actually has a ranged attack as well, with three range. 5 attack damage, and 3 ammo. Now if you look at his skills, then he has agility. Uh, he uses... Uh, this unit ignores the opponent's counterattacks while engaging them in melee. He's a marauder, and that means that the unit claims a portion of trophies, just like the, the brigand does. And he has stealth. He can actually use stealth, but that normally means that he would have to devote more stamina on doing so. So you can actually not target him or attack him. And um, he can actually really sneak up closer to you. But he, he, he would burn a lot of stamina to actually get to you that way. Last unit is the Bowman. We have one of those as well. Uh, this is usually the, the unit that, if I can call it that, I fear the most. Because they are ranged and... Um, if you look at his range, he's standing on hills, so that is six right now. I have six on my hero and six on this guy as well. Usually what I try to do is get one of my swordsmen or one of my tanks closer to him, and then he stands no chance. But in the meantime, he's going to be able to shoot arrows at us, or he might be stupid enough to actually get in our range, and then you know we can simply burn him down. Reposition our troops. Uh, he positioned his. We actually start the battle right now. So as you can see, he's making movements. Also note that most units, when they actually go onto the hill, they lose one stamina. If you look at the mouse over again, it's got one stamina to get on the hill. If you go from plane to plane, there's, it's got one speed, and there's no, you know, there's no stamina cost at all. But this um, costs two speed to walk into forest, and that actually gives range defense plus two. It's a good spot to stand if you're dealing with a lot of enemy archers, for example. It's, a, it's a really nice to stand in a forest. It's our turn. They're not in range. Uh, he has range 6 right now for his bow. 
If you hover over him, you can actually see that on the bottom of the tooltip it says spell range 7, so he's just out of range. If he comes one closer, for example here, then he would be in his range. So what I'm going to do right now is, I'm not going to do anything but my hero. Uh, I'm going to move my tank onto the hill. Also make sure that uh, if you click on him again, even though he has no movement uh, speed points left, you can actually still move him to face the enemy. You simply select him and then you can actually, a little, you know, direction, a sword pops up that actually will allow you to face the enemy. Last thing you want to do is actually turn your back to the enemy because you can actually get backstab for more damage. We'll see that as well. For the rest, I'm just going to wait for them to come closer. Let's keep it simple. So, he's still not in range. I'm going to move him closer. Okay, so the Thief is now going to be in our range. Actually, both of them are. Uh, the turn always starts with your hero. If you hover over him, you can actually see the expected damage. It's going to be between 6 and 9. And for him, it's 4 to 7. It also shows that ammo is 8 out of 8. And if you can see in the bottom here, he has 8 out of 8 ammo, uh, arrows still left. Um... 4 out of 7, 6. Okay. I'm actually going to shoot at him. So the reason being is, is that he has movement of 2, so he's not going to make it either way to us, and then next turn we can simply kill him off, and he, my bowman, is going to hit him either way. That is that. I'm going to keep him here. I'm actually going to move him to the forest because that bowman is going to come in range. I'm going to move him onto the hill. Select him again. Make sure that we face the enemy. Okay. Let's see. So he's now in range of this guy. 1 to 4, 0 to 2. Because he suddenly he takes a lot of less damage because he's standing in the forest, which kind of protects him. And he's standing in the forest as well. So suddenly, just now they were standing here, so they took a lot more damage. We're going to focus on him. I might kill him. We actually were able to finish him off. And I'm going to shoot at him. It's not much. Uh, let's see, he has range defense 3. And uh, he stands on planes. But the Bowman doesn't do as much damage, especially early on until you level him up a little bit. Because, I think I discussed this in the first episode, the Crossbowman has the armor piercing, so I normally prefer the, cross, the Crossbowman. Um, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And the turn. He's going to shoot up my tank. Did no damage. Uh, he's still standing in the forest. He is standing in the forest as well. But I do want to get rid of him. So he can actually throw his spear. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, he's not doing much damage. Zero or one. Well, let's hope we get one. Nope. Okay. Bowman decides to come close, so I'm not really sure why. I guess he didn't like the fact that he didn't know damage on my tank. Because they, the, the computer, the AI, actually tries to avoid that. What they do is they... If they if you cast a protective spell, for example, you, we will see that further on in the game, that you can actually cast some armor on one of your units, then they will try to avoid that unit because they realize they're not going to do much damage, so they try to actually get around to do the more vulnerable ones. Um... I'm actually going to shoot at him. Ooh. There's one left, and he's going to be in range of my spearman. But that's okay. Uh, is there any force I can step into? No. Let's see. I'm going to shoot at him. Not much damage. No damage in this case. What I'm also going to do is I'm actually going to move him in front of. So what I can do is I can move. And then I can attack. 
And this red tile, this hex that is red, is actually impassable. Um, you can't get through here. So in order for him to get to this guy, you would actually have to get around him. And you know, that's like a little buffer. I have a little barrier in between. Okay. You see, actually, when he attacked him, you saw that he counterattacked him right after the fact. I'm going to shoot at him. Now, these troops build up experience. Let's see if we can actually see this. Um, let's see if anybody, if it would actually show at this moment, not yet. What happens is, is that the troops build up experience and... Um, According to what I read about this, is if you actually, if this unit kills this unit, then this unit would get more experience than the other people involved. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to shoot at him with my hero. Get rid of him. Let's see if there's anything. No, there's still no. We'll see that further on that you can actually see their experience that they that they are gaining in the game. Uh, the bowmen I don't really care much for. I mean, he's a nice guy and everything, but it's not something that I really care much about leveling up compared to my tank. So hopefully he can get the blow. It says actually that he will kill. So and now supposedly he's supposed to get more experience. Okay. Battle is over. You saw their levels actually. We were already dealing with a level 4, a level 2 and a level 5. Uh, that is going to be very common in the game. We will level very slow compared to what we're dealing with. And right now we're all zero. We got 29 gold from the battle. And, and our hero gained a new level. He's now actually level 1 scout. And his magic is increased. And he has three abilities that can be increased. It's health, magic and command. Command will allow him to uh, commandeer more troops in his army. And also higher rank troops. Uh, magic will basically, if you hover over it. It's one of the three core attributes of the hero. The higher the hero's magic attribute is, the more spells he can learn. That is really for his magic use. So this is really handy to have, actually, because we're going to use spells on him that is going to help in our battle, even though he's not a wizard. He, he can use some spells. And the other one is the, the, the health, which actually affects his hit points, his stamina, and his morale. So it's also very nice to have. Now, on top of him leveling this, we can actually choose one of these three abilities here that we can level up. The number 211 means that if we select this, it would actually lead to level 1. So we do not have level 1 yet, and we would get level 2. No, we, we start at 0 with these, and this one we already have 1. Um, as I discussed in the first episode, we had scouting level 1 already. And let's see what we can pick. So we can go for scouting level 2, uh, which allows to raise a false alarm, and a lot also increases our exploration when we explore provinces. The false alarm is its kind of funny when you uh, start a battle, you can spend gold to kind of create a panic among the enemy. So that is definitely interesting. Then we have reaction. We would actually get, like I said, level 1 for this one. That would be increasing our initiative by 1, or range defense by 1, and resistance by 1. Now keep in mind this is only for the hero, so this does not affect the other troops, this ability. Um, our hero would get higher initiative, higher range defense, and higher resistance. This one is pathfinding. Uh, that is uh, mostly dealing with the global map. So that would actually increase our forest knowledge. That we would actually be able to uh, move faster through forest provinces. Um, I think I'm going to go for this one. I think this is the most interesting. So let's pick that one. Okay, battle is concluded. We get one of these tips again. And I kind of did this on purpose. Our schedule construction pops up, and we were planning to build that show booth. But now it's stating that we, we cannot build it because we did not build all the prerequisite buildings. So what we're going to do right now is go to the stronghold, and we're going to look to see what we need to do to build that building. Go to the entertainment quarter. You click on the show so, and it shows that here, the tavern is the one that we're missing. Now, the plus sign indicates that we can actually build this right now. It costs us 30 gold, it gives us plus one income, and allows us to recruit mercenaries in the garrison. So let's build this real quick. Construct. 
Next turn we can then build the show booth. Also, if we actually go to the hero army and we go for the recruitment, actually let me go to the, the other option how we can do that as well. Let's see. So Okay. Because over here he cannot recruit at all. The reason being is, is that he's not in our home in our home province in Whitestone. We actually just now conquered this province, but just like we started in Whitestone, we actually have to build um, buildings that allow us to recruit, for example, archers and etc. etc. There's a bit there's a way to get around that, and uh, I will discuss that later. You can actually build a building here that will allow you to recruit whatever you can recruit in this province, more or less, I should say, because in some units you can only recruit in one province at a time it depends on the what you discover in the province but the other thing i wanted to look at is if you look at this again you can actually see the the red bar here that, that is their health bar their hit points and as i told you in the, in the previous episode that after a battle is over don't simply assume that your army is completely healed up just like in this case they're still recuperating for example a bowman he's at seven out of ten hit points and that can make quite a difference that sometimes you're you know, you forget that, and you're caught off guard, and you go into the battle, and you're suddenly thinking, crap, you know, I'm not fully healed yet, and it can make quite a difference. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to explore this province. We're going to do this. It has one location right now. It's, uh, let's see, witches and demon worshippers gather for their unholy rituals on the top of this hill. So I can, if I want to, I can select this option to visit that location. I'm not going to do that. Uh, from my experience, I know that the, it's probably going to be a very tough battle. And right now, we just want to take it easy. So I'm just going to go explore. Uh, we set the command in the... Well, let's right-click this one. Because to select a province, you right-click. You see that the yellow line here, it kind of shows what province you're selecting. So this one is Explore 50. This one Explore 15. So this really has an impact on... The overall mood in the province, the the corruption, uh, the income. Let's turn this on. So this province generates four plus one gem. This is forty three plus fourteen. So we're still having positive income. So that's good. But you know, we, of course, we want to build this up and explore the provinces and get some better buildings. In the province itself, you can construct this well, but it's not the same as in the castle. You will see when I click this. It's a different menu. This province has no buildings, so you can, construct up, you can construct up to three more. The thing is, is that right now none of these buildings are available to us. They're all X, X'd out, they're all grayed out and everything. But let's say that we would want to do the granary. Or the pub. No, normally I build the pub because it's, if you, could, if you click on it, it shows that it's uh, plus one income. Impro improves population move by one if there's a theater built in a stronghold and increase, increases the morale of the province defenders by one. It costs only 25 gold, so it's really cheap, and um, it improves the morale. As long as you're in your main castle, in your stronghold, you have a theater. So we have to make sure that we coordinate that, otherwise the, the pub doesn't really do much for morale at all. So that's one of the buildings you can build as long as there's an inn, because that's the whole thing. Um, it states here that if you look at the tooltip, it says requires a building in the capital province. So before we can even build a pub, we need, in the capital province, in the stronghold, we need to have the inn built. Let's go to that, make sure that we can do that, and queue that up nicely. So the next turn is going to be the show booth. Then we need to have the inn. There we go. That's not constructive because it needs a granary in the province itself, on the stronghold itself. We're going to start with that one. Increases population growth in the capital province, reduces the risk of famine in the capital province, and allows us to build these buildings. We're going to queue him. Then we're going to go to the inn because then this one will be done. So we queue the inn over here. That is. Two or three turns, we'll have the inn, and then in the province we can build a pub. Okay, let's get back out of here. So like I said, we can do several things. We can visit this location, we can explore this province, or we can go back and repair and get our health up a little bit. For now, I just 
I'm going to go explore this. Let's get that show on the road. There's nothing else we can do. We can just end the turn. But while exploring the province of Shardol Wood, you might find something unusual, a mage's tower. Apparently while exploring we've discovered a, another location that's going to be added to that list. And uh, we can examine it, or we can just ignore it and continue exploring, or we can just wait for new orders. Uh, usually I do examine it. Uh, the, the hero of the scout is basically stating that right now it would be really unwise to attack. Uh, if you look at the the defense there, so five enemies. There's a skeleton, a zombie, a ghoul and a sorcerer. And right now that would be too, too tough for our army, so it allows us to retreat. Or we can talk to them, but that can be risky because you can actually kind of tick them off and they might actually decide to attack us. So right now I would like to avoid that. It allows us to scout for 30 gold. Uh, if we do that, it will actually tell us more details about the troops. It will actually state us uh, what the levels of the skeleton, the zombie, the ghoul and the sorcerers. Um, I, I don't care for that right now. I don't want to waste 30 gold because I know I'm going to retreat either way. Even though we retreat, it actually did help uh, increase the, the terrain exploration. Because it's at 17%, it was at 15 so we got 2% out of that. The schedule construction pops up again, and this time it shows that we can build the show booth. So we can do construct. We are going to continue exploring. Let's look at the army, because we saw last time that he had 7 health, he healed 1. Keep that in mind, it's really important that you realize that if you just run around with them, they heal really slow. If you want them to heal faster, then you have to go to a garrison that could... Could be in one of the provinces you have. You can have a garrison. This province it doesn't because we didn't build anything at all. But in the stronghold, you can actually go to the garrison, put him in there, and he heals a lot faster. But then again, I, I prefer to explore right now, and he's going to be fine. Depends on what we encounter, of course. But the buildings are still queued up. There's not much we can do here because we're waiting for the inn to be built, so we can build that pop over here, and we're simply going to continue exploring. While exploring the province of Shadow Wood, might find something unusual, a ruined tower. The same options, let's examine. This time he's more positive and he thinks that we can actually win this without casualties. Four defenders, an orc, orc witch doctor and orc club thrower. This is actually not easy. Well, we're going to do the, the battle. These are This, this should be a, a nice battle. So we're going to attack. Takes us again to that battle map. It will always position you or try to position you in the, the last layout that you had. So in this case it's, it's not necessarily better. They have Orc Witch Doctors and Orc Club Throwers. Club Throwers have range. Uh, Witch Doctors do magic and the Orcs are just melee, kind of tankish, kind of bruiser. Um, let's see. Right now we're standing mostly on forest here. Plains, forest, plains, there's a forest, plains. I might be for a hill, so I'm going to put my guy Dale over here. My tank here. This could be tough because, you know, like I said, <laughs> you want to make sure your troops are full health. I didn't expect to be running in orcs, and I could have retreated, but what's the fun in that? All right, I think this is this is okay. I would have preferred another hill, but I don't see another hill for my my second arch or something that we can walk to really fast. I think this is probably our best layout right here. All right. Yeah, on the other side. Um, no, I'm going to wait. Let's hover over the club thrower. See, these numbers are slightly better. 20 gold to buy, 5 gold upkeep. Defense, he has no magic defense, but we have no magic users, unfortunately. So yes. His defense, his range defense is pretty decent. So he has ranged, he has three clubs he can throw, because that's what he's going to be throwing. They do slightly decent damage though. He has a lot of hit points, um, stamina, morale, above average. So when he when attacking an enemy in melee, the unit decreases the target's defense by one, and the effect lasts for three turns. The moment he 
uh, basically gets a melee ranged, then the moment he hits somebody, then that defense will go down by one. So it makes you a little bit more vulnerable. A hit by the stunning missile decreases anima stam uh, enemy stam stamina by one. When he hits you with a club, you lose one stamina. Usually I'm not really too worried about those. I'm more worried about the Witch Doctor. First of all, he's a magic user. And let's see. 20, 12, 12. So that's pretty decent. Um, he has one speed. He has actually a lot of melee attack. And decent counter attack. He has not much defense. But has four. This four ammo, you're thinking he has no range and he has four ammo. That means he can cast four spells. Damage armor, same as the other guy. Orc Fury. That means that all neighboring friendly orcs receive plus two to their melee attack, which is pretty substantial. The, the good thing is that, if I can call it that, the good thing is, is that the computer usually doesn't really run him along with his other orcs, so then he usually doesn't have anybody around him. And of course we don't want that to happen either way, so he's usually our prime target. If he gets in range, we focus him. Then he has a spell, uh, it's called the Scream of Urugu spell. The unit can cast a Scream of Urugu spell, dealing damage to the target and lowering its morale. And it's that it states ammo units consumed by casting is one. So you could literally cast that four times. And the other one is the Orc. Melee unit, no ranged. Really no good defense, except for ranged, which <laughs> we are kind of mostly focused on ranged. Decent hit points, decent numbers here. Uh, it does a lot of attack though, a lot of damage. Yeah, keep that guy away. We start, not much I am going to do or want to do in this turn because I kind of love this location. It's the best location that we can find, I think. But this is going to be tough, to be honest. Well, nothing happening. They are just moving. and I think all of them have one movement speed, so this is going to take a while. Now I can move towards them, but then I'm going to leave my, my forest and my hills and going into the plains, and I prefer to, to stand over here. So I apologize, this can take a little moment for them to get in range. Okay, well let's see, 5 to 8, 5 to 8. Um, I'm going to go for that one. Okay, nobody's in range with this guy yet, that's fine. And he's going to start casting his spells, and this is going to be painful. Because he did a lot of damage already to our guy. Let's shoot at him. Let's get him out of the way. Okay. I'm going to move him out of the way. Hopefully get him out of range of that guy. Okay, uh, nope. He used two spells, he has two left. But that is, I think, enough to kill him, actually. Well, looks cowardice, I admit. But right now we don't want to lose him. And there's not much we can do about his caster at the moment. Later on, uh, we'll have some spells of ourselves and I can do stuff. But right now, magic really is a weakness for us, so... And look, look at the range, it takes, takes this guy like 9 turns to get to the, to the Witch Doctor. By then he's 3 times dead. Okay, let's focus here. Um, there's one movement, I'm pretty sure they all have one movement. The Club Thrower has ranged. Now, I do 6 damage on him. I'm going to do some damage on this guy. 3. Okay. Let's move him a little bit closer, facing the enemy. Ooh, he has two left. Alrighty. I'm out of here. Okay. His range is two, so he's still okay. When well, he's going to walk on the hill, that should basically end his turn, because then he shouldn't be able to throw anymore. Um...
Let's select this one first. Okay, that's pretty decent. Let's bring him closer. For two reasons. First of all, to do damage. And second of all, that hopefully he will use the spells on this guy instead of my bowman. He actually killed him with his counter attack. He's actually using a spell on my hero, which is... That's fine. I don't care. Okay. There's one left. After that, he actually has to come in range to do anything. So I can go over here. He actually... Yeah, that's too bad. Let's give him some experience. Doesn't do much damage, but that's fine. Want my hero to damage him? So he gets more experience, because it's more important for me that my hero gets experience in a level than my bowman. Okay, we'll just wait. Okay. Yeah, you can actually see that uh, he now has a, a debuff because he has damage armor. The unit's armor has been damaged, his defense is decreased by one. Which was a result of that uh, engagement with that orc. That was one of his skills, remember? Alright, he is zero. Um, I'm just going to stand here on the hill and get some defense because this guy now has to come in melee range, which is always funny. Uh, I'm going to get some close, a little bit closer. Yep, there he comes. That well, wasn't a lot of damage for my hero. He's, not stand he's standing on planes. The only re range defense too was not too impressive. Oh! I didn't see that coming. That was badly played by me. But it was a spearman. And I'm should be okay now. Oh, he's actually not doing anything. Okay, that's not too bad. We lost our spearman, but uh, if you remember from the first episode, it's not somebody that I usually keep around long, anyways. Great. So we gain another level, and it's again magic. Uh, right now we're a level 2 scout and we can have a three choices they actually change there's a lot of abilities that you can actually choose from there's always they're always presented in you know three choices but we'll see later on that there's like over 10 abilities that you can actually level up that way i think this is the one that we picked last time so right now it would actually take us a level 2 which would be initiative plus 1 on top of that range defense plus 1 and defense plus 1 and looting, it would actually give us plus 10% more loot. I, I, I never picked that really, to be honest. Scouting plus two, I'm going to go for this one again. Great. So our swordsman actually gained a level. And uh, experience gain in combat allows the unit to achieve a new level. We can pick between two choices. We can either get the hit points up or the morale up. They're both important, but right now, since he's a tank, I'm going to get his health up. And after we searched the battlefield, we found another 77 gold and 3 gems. That's not a bad haul at all. Alright. There's our tip again. Schedule construction pops up, so now we can build the granary. Let's do that. Let's look at the army. We lost one guy. He's at lower health. He's also at lower morale. That can be because of the battle, but can also be because of other reasons. What, what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to walk back to Whitestone, to the stronghold, and recruit a new troop and get some healing done as well. And also look more at our magic. But I'm going to leave it here for now. So the next episode, we're going to look more at magic. We're going to do more conquering and exploring. Expand our kingdom. We're going to do more battles with different units. So you can actually see how that goes. And yep, like I said, I'm going to leave it here. I uh, thank you really so much for listening to my ramblings again. And hopefully I will see you next time. Have a great day.